Pierce, and welcome to Chicago Reacts. My name is Lauren, and today I am going to be watching a video that I think will probably end up just disgusting all of us, so I've got my drink here. I hope you've got yours with you as well. The McDouble Cocktail. Uh, I've never heard of it. I never wanted to hear about it. It sounds like something that would show up on cold ones, but no, it's here on how to drink. So let's uh, watch this poor man suffer for his art and try not to gag. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more stuff like this. Don't forget to check out our, uh, our lovely friends over here on how to drink as well. Let's go. A lot of people a lot of people ask me, Greg, what's your favorite drink from the show? Not this. I'm not making this again ever. What you see before you here is nothing more or less than that most decadent and vile creation from McDonald's birthed forth from the friars of hell, the McDonald's. Uh, and for reasons that I still have trouble articulating, apparently, I'm going to try and make a cocktail that tastes just like it today. Why? <laughs> So I saw a TikTok a little while ago from a lovely lady who was trying to make a, a cocktail that tasted like a McDouble. She said she heard a bartender once say that they had accidentally done so and they were trying to recreate the experiment. She's up to four or five attempts on her TikTok. I'm going to see if I can. See, I feel like that's just, it's, it's verging on like chemical warfare at that point. You accidentally make a drink that tastes like meat and cheese. Something in your bar has gone bad. Like... That's all I can think of. Something that you put in that beverage was poisonous. More so than alcohol is already poison. Actively dangerous, Mr. Yuck levels of poison. I can lend a hand. So today I'm gonna to take this McDouble and attempt to make a cocktail that tastes just like it. To do that, I had to get a McDouble and I brought my notebook, which is the bougiest of notebooks, the Remarkable too. I do love this thing. It's not a sponsor, but maybe I'll throw an affiliate link up there. Let's open the McDouble. Ah, yes, there it is. The lowly McDouble. And so what it is, by the way, in case you're wondering, this bun is toasted and from my notes before, essentially tastes like French toast the way it's toasted. You got two sad- It's that sweet? Little patties, some cheese between them. I haven't had a McDouble ever in my life, so. I always got them, I always got the McNuggets if I went to McDonald's. I've never had their burger. Some pickles right in the center. There are onions both on the top nice and the bottom. I think there's so some good. salt and some pepper on here. And it looks like ketchup, but it is actually ketchup and mustard. And I know that because of another TikToker who used to be an executive chef at McDonald's, kind of doing a lot of coverage on how to make McDonald's things at home. So I've, we've done a little bit of research already. Mmm, let's dig into this McDouble. You know, they're even better cold. That's a lie. It is delicious. It will make me feel like shit. My notes wrote, actually, kind of umami, which I think is true. It has like a meaty kind of umami. Umami. I thought like I thought he was talking umami, like you know, sushi, not ooh, mommy. Mommy vibe, which is interesting because I know it's salty as hell, but it doesn't taste salty. So believe it or not, this is a well balanced oh, you did mean umami. of a burger. Okay. There is ketchup and mustard. It is detectable. I think it's got to be more ketchup than mustard. There's a very light tang. I mean, there's a huge cheesy finish. That is true. The cheese really comes in on the tail end. There's onions. You get the onions. You taste them. They taste a little bit different because of the fact that they use dehydrated onions in these, which I guess rehydrate in the process of being connected to the burger. Actually, in a weird way, that makes them, I think, sweeter and also more intense. It's been like a decade since I've had a White Castle burger, but the minute I started deconstructing this in my mind, I was like, that's the White Castle flavor. And then I would say that the bun, like I said before, is almost like French toast. I forget the name of it right now. I have not had White Castle either. There's one like on the corner, like it's pretty close to me. I could go, but I don't. Last time, I, had, I did have a Culver's burger recently for the first time. Actually, that's a lie. It wasn't a burger. I had a spicy chicken sandwich. I don't think I've ever eaten a fast food burger. Huh. I just always gravitated towards chicken. As a kid, I never really liked burgers or red meat. And now I do uh, like burgers, but I have never eaten a fast food burger. <laughs> How did I miss that? Just like, I feel like that's like a piece of my childhood that's just gone forever. 
but there is a Jersey diner staple that is a sandwich that is made with French toast on it. The bread is French toast. Uh, delicious. It's absurd. That's it. That's what I got to work with. I have some ideas about what we're going to need. Here we go. Trying something new today. You can see the confines of the studio back there. Duck around this studio light. Let's see down here. There we are. Well, no. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. This is not organized at all. Uh, let's come over here. That would I will make look straight mad, at like... something and not see it. Let's try the last row. Oh, wait, what's that? Nope. I should have. Wait, 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 wait. Compass box, Glasgow blend. Might want some dram. Huey, this is Blackheart. I think we might want some of that. This is what happens sometimes. I come over here to the booze wall and then new ideas come about. I might need that. Flarenum does have a little bit of a tangy vibe. That's cow. I don't. I don't think we want the mezcal one. All right, I don't know why, but I think Southern Comfort might come in handy. I hate this shit, but here it is. We're just gonna start playing around with some spirits in a really general way. I already said I think that this could be our basis. I'm gonna try and trigger. I don't know that I was very far off. So I'm just gonna start with like half an ounce of this. Immediately I'm thinking it's not gonna be sweet enough like this. It's just really funny to watch him like sniffing a burger and a bottle at the same time. We're gonna do a really scant pour of the Velvet Falernum. We gotta do like a bar spoon. Ah, all right, whatever went landed in there is fine. This is what I do. Whatever sticks to the bar spoon is my sample. A little sweet. Does this go in there? No. Holy shit, no. <laughs> How about you? No, there's none of that Christmas spice in there. Super vanilla, totally disgusting. I could see a bar spoon of this winding up in there. I could really see a bar spoon of this going in there. Okay, I think Falernum and Compass Box is a pretty good- His, I'm just impressed with his ability just to smell stuff and like, no, I have not reached that level. Also, like my, my bartending experience is pretty limited to very chill, like family bars. Like I've not taken a class or anything on it. Maybe I should, that would be fun, but like, so it's just sort of like, well, this is what I can throw together. This is what I know tastes good. This is like what I can do based on other things I already know and like what I have based here. Like I had to improvise a Sazerac once because we don't have half the ingredients needed to make Sazerac. So I had to get creative with that. And I did make something that tasted like Sazerac. Apparently I never had it, but the customers said it tasted exactly like Sazerac. So. So they like, you know, it's like, I, I can do some stuff like that, but like, just like the, just the nose that he's got to be able to be like, oh yes, I know what this, I, I can't do it. <laughs> I mean, kudos to Greg. Good place to start. Let me take another sample here. We gotta get cheese in there. I think I'm gonna rim the glass ultimately with cheese. I know it sounds gross, but I think that's what I'm gonna yes. do. Cause there's no other way to get cheese in there. So I'm gonna go to the kitchen now. Craft singles, you gotta have the cheese. I don't think this gets any citrus at all. I don't think it gets a sliced tomato. I think that's a weird idea. No, it doesn't get any of that. This is uh, not relevant, but I live on this. This is super high in fiber. It's a chia pudding. It's chia? Delicious. Uh, I got some kimchi there. I don't want that. Do I? No, I don't want kimchi. There we go. These are the dill pickles. I do have mustard seed, salt, pepper grinder, tomato juice. This might be something akin to a Bloody Mary. This is the real yeah. wild card. I don't know if I want I was wondering about the tomato juice. I was wondering if he was gonna do any like Bloody Mary type base of some kind, like a little bit of tomato juice, a little bit of lemon, just like. Listen to this drink. And I'm gonna hold off on it because to be perfectly honest, I don't think anything really tastes like tomato, it tastes like ketchup. And so maybe it's like a splash of that with sugar that gets us there, I don't know. But to that end, I think we should probably sweeten this thing up and put in a bar spoon of simple. And remember, this is just our test run. A little pepper. We need salt. It's getting a lot closer. That cheese is doing a lot of work. Take a little bit of the cheese, put it into the drink. Ew. Holy shit. <laughs> you throw a little pickle on that. Ew. Does it need this? Let's just try it. Yeah, like that much. A huge amount, really. Too hot now. Mustard is intense. Okay, so the mustard's out. How do I get it like toasty flavor? Because the toasted bun. Smoke just... it, right? Like, could you smoke the glass and make that happen? Work. Here's some of those onions, those dehydrated onions. Well, the good news is they're not contributing much at all, so they might just be textural, really. This is really on its way. I can't believe it. This is too salty. We're right there. 
We are knocking on the door of this thing. I gotta figure out a bready, toasty thing. Suddenly I'm thinking, I wonder if this could be a beer cocktail. I don't have any beer and I don't really wanna make a run for some. I am gonna go look for something toasty. Let's think about it. Maybe orgeat. Um, small hand foons orgeat. I could see some like black rum because there is some char, some toastiness there. Wait, is this a spice drum? I'm, oh, this is spice. Hold off on that. Yeah, this is very fruity, but you know, in the presence of salt, I'm gonna put like a grain of salt, top it up with that, and that's how it tastes. Way too sweet. That's not gonna play a part in this drink. We're getting there. Let me go grab another bottle or something. I'm stunned. Let's see here. I'm honestly stunned that he's gotten as far as he's gotten. This is. I mean, it's an abomination, is what it is. That, Gosling's Black Seal. Let's give this a thought. Okay, bar spoon there, maybe two bar spoons. Maybe it's a split base. Not quite a split base, but I think it could be a two to one. I think I'm ready to make a drink. Let's start with one ounce. We wanna get to about two ounces of spirits. So one ounce of my Glasgow blend and a quarter ounce of our Falernum. You know what, I don't wanna go one to one here. In fact, we're gonna try this with a half an ounce of our Goslings. We're gonna put the other half an ounce of this back in. I'm gonna set this thing to extremely fine and just do like that much. A pinch of salt, half an ounce of simple. Let's see how we're doing. Might be more of an homage at this point than an actual McDouble. Uh, one big cube, crack that up. Oop, hello, you and I have also always been impressed with his ability to just crack those giant ice cubes like that. We have giant ice cubes at our bar. I cannot crack them. They do not crack. So I, because I cannot get them cracked, I just end up, I have like another little container for things like old fashions that I use just cr like rock ice in, um, just regular ice. And then I stir it in that and then pour it over a, a glass with a big ice cube in it because I can't get the ice to do the thing. Should be splashed. Let that sit for a beat. Grab our cheese, doop, and our knife. And I'm gonna make a slice and see if this works. No? Right, can I just like maybe apply it? This is disgusting. Okay, I, I love it and I hate it. Particularly for I the purposes it. of this test, I'm just, just gonna do an open it. pour. Oh, I think we do need some of these pickles. All right, well, we know that this one isn't gonna work because the video's only been going for eight minutes, even though I've been going for 12. And it's not the color that it was in the intro. We just, we figure stuff out. We detectives over here. What the hell? We'll just set them up there like it's a McDouble. The juices of those pickles are now getting into the drink. There it is. Is it a McDouble? Let's find out. I love coffee. It is an important part of my life and, you know, my daily ritual. That's why I'm so happy that Trade is the sponsor of this episode, because Trade is super cool. They help me discover new coffees, because they've got over 55 awesome roasters making all kinds of coffee, and they ship it straight to your front door within 48 hours of the roasting date. Also, as much as I love coffee, I find that picking new beans to try can be overwhelming. So many species, places of origin, blends, roasts, farms, all of that. Well, Trey's got a matching process that's gonna be based on my preferences. And I love being surprised, and I find something enjoyable about every roast. I love this guy's bougie ass pour over. <laughs> so bougie. <laughs> that's really funny. I don't know why that's funny to me, but it just is. I'm like, pour over coffee just does make me laugh a little. <laughs> I'm like, okay. All right, just get a French press. Like, it takes, uh, uh, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I've am i had pour over coffee, and I honestly am like, it doesn't taste different. <laughs> it doesn't taste different enough anyway for it to be worth it. Most I get. Like this bag from the Atlas Connect collection from Joe Coffee. This is, comes from Colombia. Tells me it was grown between 16 and 1800 meters above sea level. It was wash processed. And uh, let's see how it is. That is a bright roast. I like that. That's really cool. It's very fresh. Uh, citrusy. I would say lemony even. And with like an afternote like at the very end there of uh, mild caramel. Ooh. So it's Ooh. a good wake me up roast. 
So here's the thing. If you love so coffee great. and you want more of it, you should hit the link in the pinned comment or up here in the corner thing. You're gonna get a free bag of coffee with any subscription level that you happen to go with, okay? So thank you to Trade for sponsoring this episode. And now back to the show. Check it out. Go over there, get yourself some Trade coffee. You, you, you need coffee, you want it. Coffee, 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 coffee. That is really, really good. I'm loving this cup of coffee. Is it a McDouble? Let's find out. It's actually too sweet. It should be saltier, I think. There's a flavor there that's missing. An enigma. We gotta tone our smoke way down. Okay, let's start over. Number two. Vodka is really what I should be using. Why not all goslings? Because then it would overpower, I think, for sure. I think the velvet falernum is not a bad idea. I like the cheese rim. If I had my torch, which did not survive the move, I would probably do something different with it. I might even just melt it over the top of the drink. And I like the pickles on top. And I reserve the right to throw a splash of tomato juice in there. This is gonna become some kind of a tiki drink. I don't have enough glassware to keep iterating on this, so let's go get some glasses. And I think a lot of this is Visky, if not all of it. If you like the glasses you see on the show and you wanna buy a set, I'm using Visky glassware. You can pick them up using the link in the pin comment below. You'll get 15% off if you use code how to drink 15 at checkout, okay? Pick up some how to glassware. drink 15. That's a good one. Got some more glasses. How to drink 15. All right, same as before. Okay, I'll look that up. Set up our delicious cheesy rim. Mm -hmm. Oh, this mm -hmm. may not stick as well. It's gross, but it's working. Our cheesy rim, mmm, it's so good. All right, here we go, one ounce of goslings. Boom. I want a quarter ounce of our Glasgow blend. I got my vodka, which happens to be Dan Aykroyd's Crystal Head Vodka because it was left over from an episode where we needed it. I don't even remember what the hell we were doing. There is more to life than mere material reality. Um, I have watched a reaction to, or I, I watched a John Tron video about that particular crystal head, and I brought out my own Dan Aykroyd crystal head vodka bottle that was given to me by a friend, um, empty already, so I have not actually tasted it, but I have the bottle. Okay, three quarters of an ounce of vodka, otherwise known as neutral grain spirits. Two bar spoons of falernum. Salt in there, a couple squeezes of pepper, super duper fine. And uh, I'm ready to shake this up, get some ice. Ice is stuck together, there we go. Ah. Close enough, Take out it. Just gonna dump it into our glass. Great big boulder sitting in there. Dress that sucker up with some pickles. I don't know why I used That looks more similar. Time. Okay, here we go. This is McDouble number two. Hmm. It's under sweetened because I forgot to add the sweetness. Put this back into your shaker. Uh, how much sugar did I say? It was way too much last time. I think I did a whole half an ounce. Let's do a quarter ounce. Just enough to like balance it out. It doesn't take a whole lot to get that into the drink. Repour our monstrosity. Get some fresh pickles. Oh, that one's, that's, that's a weird pickle. We don't want that one. <laughs> that is it. a weird pickle. Oh my God, I love that for you. Um, and give it a try. I don't know. Man, we're not getting it. We're just off. I think I do need to get onions in there somehow. Even though those dehydrated onions didn't really taste very oniony on their own, I do think that that's actually a really big part of the flavor. Just as a test, I'm going to kind of float about a half an ounce of tomato on it. This will be different. Yeah. Oh, that looks <laughs> more similar to what it looked like. It's still actually too sweet. All right, one more crazy idea before I go figure out how to get onions into a cocktail. I'm gonna put three pickles into the shaker, maybe even more. That's like four pickles and a bar spoon of pickle juice. I'm gonna split us four base spirits, one ounce of Gosling, one ounce of Glasgow blend, quarter ounce of Falernum, a goodly pinch of salt, maybe even two goodly pinches, wow. some fresh pepper, and I'm gonna put in half an ounce of tomato juice. And this time, no simple. Just gonna do it with one. Dump it into your glass. The pickles wound up on top, which is kind of fun. Good. That's a lot closer. The scotch is too much. And it does need a little sweetness. Maybe just a bar spoon. We're gonna tinker with this right now and see how much it needs. That might be it. It just doesn't look good. Tomato was important. Really important. Okay. Ugh. It's so salty right now though. I kinda yeah. Is this a good episode? Eurydice-ish? What? Is, is Eurydice known for being salty? I thought she was just known for 
uh, getting lost in the underworld because Orpheus didn't trust her or some shit. Like, was she salty about that? I mean, I bet I bet she was salty about that. But what? Where does that come from? Explain that to me, please. So if I just fail, even though this drink isn't where it needs to be yet, let's just see what happens if I throw a little dream beauty in there. I had that instinct. One, two, three, three old bar spoons. No, tastes like Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops. New idea. I am reasonably sure that mustard is not what's missing here. But to rule that out, I'm going to put like two things of mustard in there and a good splash of vodka. What does so much. mustard do to a neutral spirit? Here we go. There you have the mustardini. Whoa! Yo! Woo! <laughs> that is bad. Um, no, <laughs> mustard's not what's missing from this drink. Woo! Moving along. I gotta figure out how to get onions in a drink. I, the only thing I can think of doing is like sauteing onions and yeah. putting them into a drink or infusing them into a spirit or... Uh, I don't wanna do that. I was, think, I was thinking that's the only thing I could think of was infusing the onions somehow. Juicing them? We could juice some onions. Get some onion juice, baby! Fine, I'm gonna have to go saute some onions. Juice them! Oh, I fucking hate these things. I don't want to introduce any other flavors in here, so I'm not going to use stainless with oil. I'm just gonna use a non-stick. Get to about a medium heat here. We don't want to go too far on this. just want to brown them up. When using a nonstick pan, I like to use a little rubber spatula. It's starting to sweat a little bit, but Cooking dehydrated great. ones that they use are browned, I think. We could get these really well sweat and take some of them off and then take some off after they're browned up. One more heat, please. Normally, I would probably just leave them alone, but I think in this case, I want them so evenly browned. I can just see the color starting to shift on them. And I think this might be the key to getting this drink right. Look at that. Let's see if we can figure out how to use these in a cocktail. I took them to two different Muddle places, up. right? These are just Muddle like barely up. sweated. And they have a little sweet to them. They're nice. These are more like what I expect McDonald's to be using. They don't taste like much, but I think in the presence salt, they're going to matter a lot. They do have a, a later on kind of onion and umami taste, right? I don't know, I guess let's just try this again. I was doing a split of Gosling's and Glasgow blend before. I think that this isn't it at all. I think it's a whole two ounces of Gosling's. I was thinking originally that char, smoky scotch, that made sense, but you know, I don't think that's really what's in the flavors of this thing. I do think this could go in there. I'm gonna do a quarter ounce of falernum. It's like a savory tiki cocktail, maybe? Interesting notion. We'll do half an ounce of tomato juice a goodly dash of our salt and several twists of pepper. Let's just see where we're at here. I think we're on to something now. I'm gonna do a bar spoon of pickle juice. I think these go on as a float. Let's shake this up and see what we got. I don't want a float of onions in my drink. And open pour. And then do, I don't know, like a scattering of toasted onions on top, and maybe a couple of pickles. Please let this be a McDouble tail, McTail, Mc, McCocktail. That's it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> wow. That's it. We've got a McTail. We got a McCocktail. <laughs> The only thing that would make it more McCocktail-y is if you could somehow put cheese on it. The cheesy rim didn't really work ever. Let me try this though. It doesn't not work. Hold on though. I think too much pepper, but it's right there. This is, this is it. All right. I'm just literally gonna throw a bunch of <laughs> disgusting <laughs> American cheese in here. For tasting notes though, it tastes like a McDouble if a McDouble were a cocktail. This is it. Those onions were key. I don't know how to present this cocktail in a way that's not absolutely foul. This you is like can't. shook with cheese. Oh God. Now the cheese is staying. <laughs> the cheese mostly stayed Ew. in my shaker. <laughs> it's gross. Ew. Yep. We got it. I don't know if I want it, but we got it. 
I mean, you do need the pickles because the pickles are oozing pickle juice all over the top of this drink. So they're constantly kind of, in a small way, but in a meaningful way, putting a sheen of pickle juice across the top of the drink that sort of self-replenishes as you drink it. Also, you get the smell of the pickle, which is huge. I think I hit it with too much pepper, maybe even too much salt. I think that's probably what's a little bit off here. We got it. That's as good as it gets. And when you put these on top, you kind of also smell them and also drink them, which by the way is weird. Yeah. I like the textural element of putting the onions on top. I think it's cool, it's different, it's unique. It definitely tastes like a McDouble. Here's the thing about that. No cocktail should taste like a McDouble. A lot of people ask me, Greg, what's your favorite drink from the show? Not this. I'm not making this again ever. I don't know what else to say. That's some weird shit. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, you can find me on the social media places. And also, hey, here are four things from HTD's past that you may enjoy. Also from Midnight Local, the podcast that is hosted by me and Meredith. I hope you are checking that out and enjoying it. We talk about movies over there. It's a lot of fun. That's it for me today. See you guys next time on another episode of HTD. Bye-bye. Okay, well, that was pretty nasty, uh, honestly. Um, not necessarily as horrific as I thought it would be, but, like, not great. Not good. Um, not good. But anyway, that was um, a thing that exists now. It's a McDouble cocktail. It exists in the world. He's taught the world how to make it. So thank you for that, I guess. Yay. Anyway, uh, don't forget to uh, like the video and subscribe to our channel as well as checking out more of uh, how to drink. Let me know if there's anything else by then that you want me to look at. Um, I think I'll probably do that fall drinks, the Halloween-y looking one um, soon because, hey, it's almost spooky season. Uh, my favorite time of year. But anyway, thank you again for watching. I will see you all in the next one. Until then, cheers.